when you look at what Larry Summers had to say, warning of a Fed rate hike, how do you feel about that potential? No, I don't think so. I mean, the Fed, uh, as we know, has a strategy of high for long, or high for longer, or high for very long. One of those, right? And we are in that process. Let's remember, they uh, high rates last time, last July. Uh, soon it's going to be almost a year. It's a question of waiting for the effect of those rate hikes to percolate through the economy and inflation. How do you think about those lagged effects? How do you see those playing out? So the lags are there. You know, it's a sequence, right? Uh, it had an impact on the housing market. Housing activity really came down. It had an impact on some of the durable goods consumption. It has not had an impact, and that's a surprise, for example, on fiscal policy and public investment, because fiscal policy has been sort of offsetting some of the tightening effect coming from monetary policy. So we are in a new world. This is a new world where there are a lot of policies that are happening that are playing at the same time. And so it's long and variable lags. Let's not forget that. And we are just experiencing that. You wrote in a Financial Times opinion piece here on May 2nd that there is still a narrow path to a soft economic landing. Do you still believe that? That was almost a year ago. It was after the SBB crisis and all that. And yes, I mean, I subscribe to that. We were one of the few places where we didn't call for a recession last year. And uh, it's because we were seeing a lot of resilience in the US economy, right? Uh, consumers have very sound uh, balance sheets. Uh, companies have also done a lot of liability management. Banks are well capitalized. Uh, the housing market is underbuilt, if anything, right? So a lot of the elements that could have driven to a recession uh, were not there. And I think we are seeing that. How do you feel about the direction of inflation from here? If you think about the maelstrom of data that we are seeing, do you believe that there is a path downward? Or mm -hmm. does it stay higher for longer, maybe higher forever, if, if you think about our star? Listen, we had, uh, we had two big shocks in series, right? One was uh, you know, the reopening that was really abrupt uh, that led to the bottlenecks. And then we had the commodities uh, spike. And that has generated a ripple effect. Think about a tsunami. Right? And so what we are seeing now is basically still the aftermath of that. So goods inflation went up, it has come down. Services inflation is next. It went up, it's coming down, and it's coming down more slowly because services inflation by nature is a stickier. And then you have wage inflation, right? Which surprisingly hasn't been as strong as some people may expect it, but it's now you have real wages catching up a little bit, and that's going to extend a little bit the persistence of core services inflation. I think it's happening according to plan. It was never going to be a steady path. We are seeing bumps, and the bumps are just part of the game. So when you think about the bumps that we are seeing, what does that mean about where we are a year from now, even two years from now? I think. Listen, if we believe in theory, right, inflation expectations are well anchored at around 2%. There is that gravitational pull of inflation expectations. So unless there is a policy mistake, and I'm not saying that there will be, we should have inflation converging gradually towards 2%, which is what most forecasters have, is what markets are pricing, is what the Fed, I think, is expecting. It also begs the question how quickly interest rates do come down. If you think we eventually converge here, how long do we stay higher for when it comes to rates? So that's, uh, you know, as the Fed is saying, they need greater confidence. What does greater confidence mean? Greater confidence is greater confidence on the forecast. Right now, they are not completely convinced that what I just said is true. Once they become a little bit more convinced, then I think they can start doing what they say, dialing back restraint. Now, you can cut rates even if inflation is still a little bit high, right? Because there has been a fair amount of progress on inflation. Let's not forget, core PC was 4% last year. Now it's probably a little bit below 3 you know? That means policy can be a little bit softer today. How much of a risk is there from moving to a soft landing to something harder? When you look at the fragility yeah. in the economy, where do you see any fragilities? So I think the fragility is in the labor market, right? The labor market is a little bit uh, misleading right now. So we are getting very strong non-farm payrolls growth, a lot of that coming from foreign workers, right, from immigration. But when you look at the details, the hiring rate has come down. The firing rate has also come down. It's a bit like a labor market, a bit on pause. And why is that? Because companies a couple of years ago were scared they were not going to find workers. So they went and they hired any worker they could find. And now they are hoarding them because they fear that if they fire the workers, they may not be able to hire them back. So we are in this state of labor hoarding. How long does this go for as long as the outlook is bright? So if policy is too tight for too long, we run the risk that the labor market cracks. And then you have a sharp increase in the unemployment rate. How much of a risk is there that that rate does stay high for too long? So 
there are two ways of rates staying high for too long, the good and the, and the bad one. The good one is the neutral rate is just higher. And so we have higher rates for a good reason, for the right reason. The other one is the policy mistake. High rate, rates stay high for the wrong reason because even if our study is a bit lower, the Fed is a little bit too focused on inflation or misdiagnosis the outlook and then overstays the tightening. Both scenarios you mentioned suggest higher rates perhaps than the market is expecting. Probably higher rates for long as a sort of medium term. Yes, exactly. Because we are living in a world where probably, the way I like to think about it, we have sort of concluded the post great financial crisis period. The deflationary period is over. So is there anything wrong in going back to where we were in 2005 or six when we were thinking the neutral rates were about 4%? I don't think so.